If you have a child, regularly interact with children, or think you may one day even know a child, then this video is for you. CPS is tasked with protecting children, but often this is done by trampling on the rights of uneducated parents and caregivers, all while declaring that the ends justify the means. Well, that's not how it's supposed to work. First, let's get a couple of things straight. The young caseworker at your door isn't wearing a uniform, gun, or a badge, but he or she is a full-fledged government agent. As with most, arguably all, government agents, they're not there to protect your rights, but are there to perform their public function. Ever heard the phrase, I'm just doing my job? Well, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, also known as CPS, they have the job of protecting the safety and welfare of children in the state of Texas. If you've read our blog, Right to Remain Silent, you know that you're not supposed to talk to the police. The same goes for CPS. CPS is on your doorstep and they say they want to talk to you, but that couldn't be further from the truth. What they really want is for you to talk to them. Unfortunately, they won't warn you that everything you say will be used against you as soon as they get enough information to drag you into court. When CPS receives a report of abuse or neglect of a child, it has a duty to investigate. During this investigation, the CPS caseworker may visit the child's home, interview the child and other children in the home, may interview the child's parents or caregivers, etc. However, you do not have to consent to any of their requests. They cannot search your home, drug test you, or interrogate you without your consent or an order from the court. If you invoke your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, your Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures, and your Sixth Amendment right to an attorney, then you can stop an overzealous caseworker in their tracks. If you choose to waive these, then please be prepared for them to use every piece of evidence they gather against you. During an investigation, CPS absolutely loves asking people to submit to drug tests, specifically hair strand tests that will go back three to six months. This is a common tactic used even when there are no allegations of drug use. I've even seen cases where there were no allegations of abuse or neglect, but CPS asked for this drug test and then used it as a basis to attempt to terminate a mother's parental rights. CPS doesn't like being told no when they ask you if you'll freely waive your constitutional rights. If you do, then be prepared to fight a battle in court. Don't freak out because this isn't a bad thing. Think of it this way. If a cop showed up at your doorstep and asked if you would answer some questions and let him search your house, would you let him? Sure, you may not have anything to hide, and letting him intrude and violate your rights would be the fastest way to get rid of him, but what kind of Orwellian nightmare society would that be? The police and CPS should resort to going to court to get approval to search your home and drug test you because then they have to lay out all their evidence for review. If you refuse to cooperate, then they must show the court good cause as to why it's necessary. If the child is not in immediate danger of suffering physical harm, death, or sexual abuse, then CPS can request a non-emergency removal. That will allow the parent time to prepare for the upcoming adversary hearing. If you want to know more information about the CPS adversary hearing, check out our CPS adversary hearing video that we're gonna link down in the description below. Just by watching today, you have armed yourself with vital information to respond to the CPS caseworker that shows up on your doorstep. Unfortunately, this is just a drop in the bucket. CPS has many more resources than you do. CPS has many more people willing to fight to take away your parental rights and has many more attorneys than you have at your disposal. However, this doesn't mean that you can't win. It just means that you need to be prepared to fight for your children. I do not recommend taking on CPS by yourself. This is one of those few times that I tell people to get an attorney. Even if you are an attorney, you should get an attorney to fight for you. You don't see surgeons operating on themselves, do you? Most importantly, do not go quiet into the night. You have rights. Your children have rights. And if you don't fight for them, then who will? We appreciate you watching our video. If you know someone with children, or someone who has involvement with CPS, please share this video with them. 
Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check out some of the other videos that we've published. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. From all of us here at Matthew Harris Law, we appreciate you watching.